April 24, 2015. I'm Connie Barlow. I'm the founder of Teray Guardians and this is another video in the series I've been doing helping to understand uh, what habitats and how we go about planting this endangered conifer tree historically from northern Florida but now about 300 miles north into the southern Appalachians which is probably where it's lived for most of its 170 million year lifespan as a genus. Um, what's significant about this is that it's the first time that I'm actually having a chance to record wild planting, the results of wild planting. Till now we haven't had enough seeds to really experiment with just putting them into wild forests like this. We've carefully germinated them, uh, controlled, uh, kept rodents away with wire fencing and so forth, or germinated them in pots. A year and a half ago, fall of 2013, I planted 43 seeds around this habitat here at about 3,600 feet in western North Carolina near Waynesville. This is the exact location where we did the first assisted migration of 21 potted seedlings in 2008 and I've been monitoring how they've been doing. But this, as you can see, it's very wild habitat here, very moist along these creeks. So, any of you who are not interested in planting, you're not involved in planting or germinating Terea taxifolia, there is no need to watch any further in this. This is about the results for those who are interested in free planting into wild habitats. That is rewilding Terea taxifolia, rather than germinating it in pots and then planting potted seedlings. The big difficulty with doing this is not that it can't grow on its own in a forest, but that it's a very large seed, about the size of an oak seed. And therefore, it's very attractive to rodents. So what are the techniques that we use for protecting them from rodents? Uh, the techniques I used here were very success successful in terms of river rocks or thatched branches. Very successful, no evidence of squirrels getting any of them. However, voles are also rodents. <laughs> and they tunnel beneath the ground, beneath rocks, chipmunks possibly along the logs. So here you're going to see the results. The first 18 months is usually the first time that we're able to see germination begin to happen. So you're going to see the results of the planting of 43 seeds. You'll see two things here. One was a video that I took about, oh gosh, three weeks or so ago when we first got to Western North Carolina, going along and first looking under the rocks. Uh, I got a little braver this time, it's three weeks later, I decided I would carefully try to dig down a little bit just to make sure um, that the seeds were either there or not, that I could either blame voles for vole tunnels on eating the seeds, or um, I could say, hey, the seeds are still here, they just show no sign of germination yet. The Terea taxifolia very likely has a multiple year germination uh, uh, sequence to it that's normal. That is, even in the same seed uh, harvest, you will have different seeds that will germinate in different times. What I find interesting here, too, that we're going to need to think about is that I got these seeds into the ground just a couple weeks after they were harvested from the parent trees and there might be something helpful about getting them immediately in the ground where the embryo uh, can keep maturing rather than what I often have to do when I've got hundreds of seeds is um, put them in the refrigerator in soil or sphagnum moth and then gradually send them out to people and it might be even a year later I end up putting them in but keeping them refrigerated in the meantime and it's possible that those take longer to germinate. So anyway, enjoy. You're going to see two sets of videos, uh, uh, one that I took about three weeks ago, and then supplements when I decided I needed, I needed to do more. I needed to really find out whether that seed was there, and also I found a couple of the rocks under leaves uh, that my notes, I hadn't been able to find them before. My notes were pretty good. So, enjoy. 
Uh, this is something that I hope anyone who's interested in free planting Terea taxifolia seeds uh, will be able to find useful. This is what I called seed number two of the planting of the 2013 harvest. I planted it beneath two river stones here. You can hear little creeks flowing by, but the main reason I want to take a picture, I mean, I don't see any evidence of it sprouting yet, and it might not be sprouting yet. But I do want to show, right in the center there is the flower of a trout lily, and look at the size of that stem. There's a leaf there. Look at the white coming all the way back to there. These st uh, stone covered it, and it was able, when I picked up the stone, um, you could see how far the trout literally was capable of growing beneath the stone. So I hope Tories can do that too. I'm taking this video of uh, where seed number six from the 2013 harvest was planted because my directions about the sticks up above of the third fallen log here sticks up above and also two small rocks and I put it underneath the log with branches barricading it from squirrels and then marked by a rock there and then there's actually another rock over there but you can see the branches. I don't see anything coming out but what's important here to know is that this barricade certainly worked. Uh, we'll see if the seed actually comes up but there's 100% proof positive no squirrel got it and perhaps a vole, vole tunneling underneath could get it. But we'll see if in a future year it actually can come up. This is seed number 14 of the 2013 harvest. And I placed it under these rotting logs and it looks totally intact. So even though I don't see anything sprouting up from there, uh, what is obvious is that the squirrels have not dismembered this. So, here's hoping that it'll come up within a few years. Seed number 17 from the 2013 harvest. Uh, blue flag was still here, so it was easy for me to find the rock. Here it is on the left. I've upended it, and a bit of that brown was visible beneath. That is the Tory seed. This Tory seed's been in there. Uh, I dug around it carefully to make sure it didn't already have a, a root growing down, but it hasn't even sprouted yet. Nonetheless, it looks in good shape, and uh, I'm hopeful that in a future year it will be able to come up under the rock, stay s safe from squirrels meanwhile as I put the rock down, and finally uh, we'll see one growing. This is seed number 18. The, my notes here show it's by that blue flag, and yes, it's true. And that I placed it under two small rocks, and over that I laid a bunch of thatched branches, and you can see that that is still the case. This hasn't been broken into yet, and when I look closely, I can see the shine of the schist rock under there. So. Again, this is 2013 harvest. It's been just two years, two winters. So I have hope that maybe it'll still come up. This is seed number 19. I picked up this rock here uh, that I had placed it under. I didn't see it, but I felt around and my finger immediately went down into a hole that keeps going. Uh, looks to me like a vole dug under, and I bet the seed was there. It's towards the center of where the rock would be. The vole came in underneath and got it. This is important if this is true, um, because it means that <laughs> surface rock protects it from squirrels, but not voles. Oh my. Here's my pen for scale. I put the rock back down. And you can see it's a big rock, so yes, it protects it from squirrels, but golly, if there's voles, they can go underneath and get it. Here's the rock over seed number 20 from the 2013 harvest, and given the last one, I'm starting to feel around when I pry up the rock. And right where my boot is here, uh, very close to there, under the rock, 
there's a giant tunnel of a vole that goes deep and down. So this is important to learn. Rocks are not necessarily the safest thing. Here's seed number 22, or at least this is where it was planted. My notes say eight feet above the trail between the two streams and three small river rocks above it. Uh, these two are obvious, but right in the center, covered with soil, is the third one. So I wonder where I put the seed. Probably under that middle one there. The other two were probably just to hold it in place, but uh, I'll take a look. Just as I was getting ready to pull out the stones, a little redback salamander came out from between that stone and this middle stone here and moved up there. I might have seen a golden egg of something under there. But anyway, no sign of the Tory seed. No real sign of voles under there, but I'm not very optimistic. Seed number 24. I uh, removed the rock. You see it there on the left. And by golly, this one was so easy to see. Another vole tunnel. I've stuck my pen in there. You see just the cap of it. Uh, I have to be careful. The, the, the pen would keep going if I let it. So that is a vole tunnel directly under there. I'm sure it got that tasty tory seed. What a learning process. Seed number 31 from the 2013 harvest. I picked up this stone very easily. It was buried in leaves, but it's easy to find when I just use my stick to uh, feel for it. My directions are very good as to where I place these. Um, I felt all around here, underneath this area, uh, kind of dug a little towards the middle, did not run into any seeds, but I did not run into any obvious vole tunnels. So, seed number 31 still has a chance. Glory, glory! Persistence pays off. Seed 35. Oh. Oh, see, I've got my pen pointing at it. I've moved uh, the rock right there off of it, but you can see that dark area where the rock was. Look at that. That is a Tory. I'll go in close on that. Let's see if I can do it from here. I know it's a Tory because uh, I've seen one before at this stage. Oh. Gosh, glory, glory. Let me give the context here. This is seed 35 of the 2013 harvest. Surely it's got a lot of root going down if it's already putting that up, and that's pretty much right in the center of where the rock would have been. I'll have to carefully put the rock back on for it to snake its way out through. Uh, but here's the context here. All right. Have a downed log here. There's a creek here, a little streamlet. You can see a large, oh golly, that's a liriodendron right straight ahead, a beautiful liriodendron. Lots of tulip tree liriodendron here. Uh, same genus of mycorrhizal fungi as Torea. Now this is the first big group of uh, rhododendron that I've run into along where I've planted seeds. Seems to end right there, you can see it's huge. And then there's another little streamlet right here that comes down. Uh, see it's got planks across here. And uh, actually, let me move off here to show how easy this is to find. What you do is you're coming on the property back toward the house there. You can see the roof of the house. This is the uppermost plank, again, by these this is just so characteristic, these rhododendrons in here. The main trail that I've been looking along for all the other ones were following back there. Straight back there a ways is a waterfall that comes down from here. Um, but a very easy way to find this. You see there's a log down here. This is a trail. You see a plank here, a plank farther in. And look at this. Here's a root of a tree that had fallen over. And uh, there's some shorty up. In fact, I'll go in on that a little. Some shorty is growing up on there. But this rock was covered 
with leaves. Uh, my directions were really good for finding it. I just used my stick poking and poking until I felt a rock. Um, but here's, I'm on the trail right here. So you can see my pen down there where it is. And for now, we've got this slim trunk over it, but you never know how long that's going to last. And here you can see some more rhododendron down there. Uh, this looks like a mountain laurel in here. But this is a place to remember. I mean, oh my gosh. But it just shows how much reproduction it takes in order to have anything. You know, that can actually germinate, establish without some critter getting it or some other hostile form of the environment. But you can bet I'm going to put that rock on very carefully. April 24th, a few weeks later. I'm back here at the same property, so I'm going to lift up this rock and see how it's doing. See if it looks like uh, it's capable of escaping the rock. Here we go. Oh yes, look how it's grown. There's a rock, I moved it off to the side. You can see exactly how the rock fit in there. And the seed is actually moving towards the side where it's going to very easily be able to get out. Look at that. Wow. Now what I'm really heartened to see is that right here, well, we've got leaves coming out. This is a little liriodendron, a little tulip tree. And what I'm excited about is that liriodendrons is one of the trees that has the same genera class of mycorrhizal root fungi as Tories have. And look how close it is. So maybe this will be able to be inoculated with it and get some good growth. Let's see how close I can get in on this. All right, Tori, I will carefully put the rock back. Keep going in that direction. You'll find, you'll find the light. Today is April 24th. I'm back checking on the rocks again, and, and this one must have just come up, or maybe I assumed it was gone. You see a hole there. That's the brown seed right there. I, I pulled away some of the soil to find it, but that was sticking up with that hole around it. I think I had assumed that that and maybe a hole over here were vole holes, so I'd given up on it. But there it is. I just cleared away a little of the soil. I'll put the rock back. Fortunately, that's really close to the edge of where the rock, where the rock goes. There you can see the size of the rock here. And the place to find it is that this is on the upper trail, just before it gets to the junction. You can see a rotting log here, but the really easy way to find it is there. See the stump? Trail's right in there, stump there, uh, cut there, and Right over here, uh, let's see, should be able to see a plank in there. Yeah, see that plank across the river or the stream up there. So we're real close to the edge here. Trail comes back this way, comes back to this rotting area, this rotting log here. Fabulous, we've got one. This will be very easy to put the stone back on here in a way that will not harm um, the little thing coming up. But I really wonder how, how does it get that wonderful hole around it? How does that happen? Okay, so here you can see the trail junction looking down. There's that flat stump uh, where uh, seed 32 was. Again, uh, this, this is April 24th now, so April 24th. Here's that flat stump, uh, see with the trail going along it, this is looking back down towards the road. Um, C32 that I just took the video of that had the germination there is just down from that stump. Here's the plank. 
Um, but I, I found C33. I didn't the first time I came through here earlier in April. So let's take a look at how to find C33. Here we are, a uh, little creek going along here. Very interesting. We got some sort of May apple growing in here. Uh, but right here, very easy to find this river rock. And I had to dig down a little bit. I found the seed. It has no sign of germination. Uh, but I moved it closer to the surface. Just a little bit of soil on one side, the rock on top. Um, and so I should be able to find it again pretty easily. So here we have a tree here and this rock. And here we have another tree here, stream here, and looking down to the plank. Oh, and here's, here's the boulder that you just walk uphill from. All right, that was seed 33. Has no sign of germination, but at least no voles got it. Okay, seed number 36 of the 2013 harvest. There's a big rock with a small rock to brace it on below. I've uh, picked up and looked under the big rock. No sign of voles, no sign of germination, but I'm hopeful. I'm not going to dig around in there in case there's something started. Here's the context. Here's some rocks hanging onto a trunk of a tumbled down tree. But here's very close to where I saw that sprouting terea. Here's the plank here. There's a little stream coming down. This is the trail. And right there, that's that tangle of rock. And so just a little bit right in that area there was where I took the previous pictures of the germinating terea underneath a rock. April 24th. I'm getting braver. This is seed number 36. I decided to poke around carefully, dig a little bit down, and I found perfectly intact torea seed here. I'd buried it a bit, but it was right down in a hole. And, you know, a hole that's a vole hole, obviously. Now, I'll try to get my hand down here. It might go a little out of focus, but when I put my fingers down through here, look at that. I have still not reached the end of the hole, okay? So this seed was basically right down like that in the vole hole, and the vole hasn't eaten it. Now maybe the vole got killed by a you know, a raptor or something, I don't know. But what this suggests to me is just because I find vole holes under rocks doesn't necessarily mean that they've taken that they've taken the seed. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to continue down there and I'm going to look at the other ones. Here you can see we've got some greenery out now that we didn't have before since this is April 24th. Looking back up, there's that, uh, the plank and up there is where I just took another look at seed number 35. This is seed number 38, directly across a little streamlet from a shortia patch. I, I couldn't locate seed number 37, but my pen there, uh, the, the rock is right there. I've upturned it. You can see there's some sort of a fungus that's been growing between the rock and the soil there. A lot of bare rootlets in there. But there's my pen stuck in a lovely little vole hole, and over on the right there is another vole hole. So I'll put the rock back. Somebody might enjoy living under there, but I have no hope for Tories. Wow! <laughs> Am I glad I'm getting brave and doing this? Voles are not a problem. Okay, so there's the fungi there, and I started digging around. There's a, a vole tunnel right there that my hand goes all the way. Well, I'll show that later, but let's take a look at this carefully, carefully. And it was revealed in the vole tunnel. I mean, there was nothing around it. Look at that. That's the germination. That's the orange seed of the terrain right there. And I'm going to go back a bit here. And... Uh, 
Look what I can do. Right there. Look at how far I go that way. And then as well, that way as well. It's a complete, it's a complete vole tunnel from there, under there, over to here, and then it continues well beyond. But there's the seed. Nobody's eaten it. Ah. I am just stunned, absolutely stunned. Oh. There, you can see the rocks back in place. And we will, rather I'll continue downstream and check up on the remaining ones. April 24th. This is seed number 39. It's unusual that this is a rock that actually isn't covered with leaves. Mostly I have to go along and uh, with my stick and try to feel where rock is. But I had mentioned that this was near a weird log, and yes it is. And here's a, a little streamlet. And I had mentioned that there was a gigantic tree that had broken off at ground level here. So directions are helping me find them. Let's see if there's any hope for Terea coming up under this rock. Actually, before I upend the rocks, I wanted to just show this. I removed a few leaves, and this was probably the best style there is, and that is two rocks placed very near each other uh, with the seed right in between, down beneath. Um, squirrel can't really get in there. But again, it looks like my biggest problem here is with voles, and they might be very interested <laughs> by this big log. This might be bad. So let's see what we see when I upend the rocks. Well, this is pretty sad. I only upended the left rock because it's so obvious here. <laughs> There's my pen stuck in a vole tunnel right where I would have put that seed. Yep. It's a struggle out here in the world. You don't have wires surrounding you during germination. you got to make it in the wild. You sure need a lot of seeds to use. Good learning. April 24th, and so I'm getting brave. Just because there's vole tunnels does not mean that the seed isn't there. So um, here you can see what it looks like. I'll pull over the rocks and then carefully look around for for the seed, and if there's anything significant, I'll report back. Well, I found some ants under there, and just a whole lot of roots. I can't imagine I put it down in all those roots, but I must have. But uh, once I picked up the root layer, I got down into a massive, massive, massive uh, tunnel system along an extending root there and a root on the other side. Just absolutely clean in there. Very easy for something to move around. So, definitely no longer a seed there. This is directly across the streamlet from where I had that last video. And this is the broken off large tree. I was thrilled. This rock was exposed. I could see it. It's a large rock. And when I flipped it over, using my finger gently pressing, Nowhere in there, nowhere in there at all, was there any evidence of a vole tunnel. Well, I just heard two chipmunks, and uh, I did decide to dig into this. Tremendous amount of roots under there, but also huge, deep vole tunnels going into there. So, you know, I, I'm thinking that Maybe what's important is to recognize that if you see a whole lot of jumble of likely obvious roots down there that voles and chipmunks could live under that would protect them and they can have tunnels under there. I mean, it, the tunnels go really deep under there. Um, this is just too good a place for rodents. And so I should not, I just should not put seeds in too close to down logs. And the same with this one that I had just previously looked at and found vault tunnels. Big root along there. Um, I've just got to stay away from logs. 
I'll have to go back and look at the videos and see the data on that and see if that is a reasonable hypothesis. If so, it could be great to be able to continue to free plant seeds directly into the ground, even using flat rocks, but just stay away from these nasty, nasty rodent havens of logs. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Seed number 42, second to the last one of the 2013 batch. Let's take a close in look here. I pulled out, you can see the rock on the left. Look at this, there's my pen for scale. Uh, a few little holes, but nothing, that's a full tunnel, but look at, look at that. Not only is that germination coming out, but that is a Tory seed, absolutely. Okay, so here's the context, this beautiful germinating terrea. Again, this is the streamlet that we've been following down since the plank. Here's this fallen, some kind of an oak it looks like, from up there. Straight in the center is that large tulip tree, Liriodendron. Uh, there would be planks barely visible there that has a trail in it, but I've been walking straight down this patch here. And yeah, let me show around here so we can find this again. There were leaves on top of the rock. Again, I could only feel it by using my stick. Here's some rhododendron right here. Uh, up this slope. You can see I'm in a really nice moist ravine. Maybe what's happened here is that, in fact, let me show how close it is. It's only about a foot above water level. So here I've got water down here. Here's my foot. And right there. Maybe this is too close to the stream level uh, for voles to venture down into. Let's take a look up this way so we can find it again. Quite sunny up there. We're in a ravine. Rhododendron here. Oh, and this is useful. There you can see the roof roof of the house straight through there. Down here, this would be seed number 42, and look, it's already got more leaves on it. Now this is the one that I got so excited about seeing germination here too. So I'll carefully lift up this rock, and I'll let you know what I find. There's a darling little salamander right in the center of the picture there. Look at that. Now a lot of them I know, they um, of that kind, they actually lay a few eggs and kind of hang with it. They don't put it in a pond or anything like that. So I have to be real careful how I look around there. But, oops, is it going to move? Look what we have over here. Yep, that's our germination piece. Let me move those leaves a little bit. Yep, salamander's gone somewhere. And see if we can get a sense of how that's growing. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, what's interesting here is that every single one of these germinating tories has somehow had the soil cleared around it. Is there some heat that comes out of there? What is it that clears an open hole? Here, I'll try to go on the side to get a little bit of the height here. Oh, yeah. Now, what's significant here, again, because this is April 24th, and so I'm working on the new hypothesis about voles and so forth. This is just about a foot above the water level. Um, you can see the width of the rock that I put down, kind of just a flat rock. Now what's interesting here, I am not going to dig around in there. There are some tunnels there, but I, see that? There's, there's some holes in there, but that's where the salamander went down into. So I don't know what's going on here, but the important thing is, is that we've got it. It's still doing well. It looks like it's coming up on the correct side. It only needs to go from about here to there. 
in order to be able to find its way up on the other side of the rock and get up and get some sunlight. I won't be able to check it for a while, but uh, I think it's pretty successful here. So again, let's take a look at the context here. We have this down log, but we're so close to water level in here. And since we saw that salamander, I'm thinking that when we get into a place that's wet enough, you're just not going to find voles. One more thing I have to show. I moved that rock a little bit, figuring out how I can place it. And look at, look at how the water is moving right down there. So it, I would estimate that the seed is only about four inches below the water level here. About four inches. So this will be a very interesting experiment. Because you get down this low and you do not have to worry about rodents. So golly, if this works, this would be a very, very safe way to plant them streamside, especially taking the place of our lovely hemlocks in eastern North America that have been killed by the uh, exotic Asian woolly adelgid. Wouldn't it be something if the terreas could be streamside? One more thing, on second thought, when I looked at the height of uh, the germination going on there above the seed, I decided to put in a uh, little rock alongside it so that when I put the main rock on top, it'll have a little bit more space. I really do not want to hurt that growing tip. Final stop, April 24th. Again, checking each seed by this creek. Very easy to find this rock. I already took it out. And I thoroughly dug through there. I'm not sure about my hypotheses anymore. So we have a branch here. We've got some rocks. But you really don't see any logs here except for this small one here that marks the edge of the trail. But let me show you. <laughs> let me show you what I found digging around. So this uh, this area here, this is what the rock would have been covering, and I thoroughly went in there. But watch what happens here. I put this stick in to a vole tunnel. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> and that wasn't even the end of it, but this is a flexible stick that could follow it. So, there you have it. A lot more to learn. Okay, so that's that for the 2013 harvest uh, put into the ground in the fall of 2013. And here we are 18 months later, basically, in April of 2015. My hypothesis now on this second time around is that I don't think that flat rocks are all that much of a problem in terms of voles. The thatched branches, I'm not going to be able to see a couple of years um, before the, the, the seedlings will be able to show through the thatched branch technique. But in terms of rocks, I think I've got pretty good data here. So if we have plentiful seeds, I would encourage planting under flat rocks, right in the center, beneath a flat rock. No squirrel can turn that thing over, turkey or a deer get it or anything. Um, but what I do suggest is not putting that flat rock anywhere near a log, any kind of a large uh, branch or another overhanging rock, anything where a vole might already have tunnels and find it useful to hang out. Put that rock just out in the middle of nowhere. And um, sometimes the voles will get them, but often it is not, they won't. Now, for natural selection standpoint, in terms of nature, I think I've got, what did I have in here? Four or 43 actually show germination. I'll have to go back and look at the data. Uh, uh, at least four or five more Seeds are still there, have not been harvested by voles, they're just waiting to germinate. That's good. That's good from a natural standpoint.
to have that kind of a germination rate. We'll see if they establish. We'll see if they can get out from underneath the rocks. It's only problematic when uh, we don't have enough seeds to do that. And we were fortunate this year we had over 2,000 seeds that we were able to harvest. But back in the early years when we'd get maximum 150 to 300 seeds, uh, we simply couldn't afford to waste any. So we might be entering a new era here. The important thing is for us to have legal access to seeds. Uh, and I'm hoping that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will amend the management plan, the official management plan for the endangered species, and not require them to be put back into their degraded, climate-degraded, peak his glacial uh, refuge historic range anymore, and agree with us that right now in this climate, and certainly as climate continues to warm this century, this right here, southern Appalachians and perhaps pla uh, places north, is where this ancient species of this genus wants to be. And once they make that decision, they'll be able to free up a heck of a lot more seeds than we have access to and begin doing scientific experiments in a way that beyond the natural history, simple little experiments that I've been doing. So let's hope that happens soon. Addendum. Six weeks later, I'm no longer in North Carolina, I'm in Michigan, very near Lake Michigan at the Lower Peninsula. And there are no rocks here. There are especially no flat rocks here. So what do you do for free planting? Well, there's two choices. Uh, one you saw early on in the North Carolina video is that I used thatched branches. I got that off of the American Chestnut Foundation site as a possible way to plant a tasty seed like a chestnut uh, without having rodents take it. Uh, but I have had no experience yet in terms of whether it works. Obviously, it wasn't disturbed in North Carolina, so squirrels didn't get it. But I don't know about volts, and I certainly wasn't willing to tear it apart in order to check to see whether they'd gotten any. So it'll be a couple years before I'm able to report back on that. Uh, nonetheless, just like it, with stones, it takes effort to do thatched branches. What about a style of free planting that's much easier? Here I'm going to show you a version of free planting that's the easiest of all. Also in North Carolina, I stopped by Russ Regnery's place and saw how his Terea taxifolia that was planted in 2008, how they were doing. And also I gave him about, I think it was 50 seeds that I gave him at the time, and we put in a few in a free planting technique, which I did film. So the primary thing to see there is that you never put it near a log. I've had enough experience to get a sense that there are rodents that make their homes by downed logs. So just stay away from there. Free planting. And in future years, we'll start to get some evidence as to whether that works. Now, a couple other things to keep in mind as well, and that is that I'm testing right now and would like to test more. What happens when you plant Terea taxifolia with uh, no stones over the top, no branches, just free planting style during a masting year in that particular region? What happens if there's a lot of acorns on the ground? Is it helpful? Is there plenty of food for the squirrels and voles to eat so they're not going to touch the tories? Or do the voles overdo it with the acorns? Their population goes up and boom, suddenly the next year there's very few acorns. Population is ready to crash. They're starving and they find the terea seeds. So we don't know about that one yet. It's an important experiment. But two other things anyone can do when they're free planting or planting uh, an already germinated terea couple things to think about where you plant it. One, try to plant it nearby a tree or a shrub that's known to harbor the same class of beneficial symbiotic mycorrhizal fungi. Here's a list of the trees and shrubs in the eastern USA that are known to harbor the same class of symbionts as Terea has. 
Finally, although the Terea branchlets are much, much too pointy for deer to eat when they're mature, deer may munch on them, sample them a little bit when they first come out in the spring before they harden. Nonetheless, the experience we have is that even if deer sample them, there's probably some poisons in there too, very similar to hemlock. They're just not going to eat it. So the only time that you have to worry about if you've got a super high population of deer where you are, you will need to protect Terea taxifolia once it gets to about knee high and higher. And that's because there isn't going to be anything in the fall in deer habitat that's more attractive to buck deer for rubbing their, the velvet off their antlers. Uh, hemlock in Michigan is the most attractive thing, uh, but certainly Terea is going to be even more attractive. This is where those pointy needles come in real handy for scraping off that itchy velvet. So you're going to have to find a way to protect the young Tereas, knee high and up for a ways, um, from deer. Otherwise, they will destroy it. They will destroy it in the rubbing. If at all you have a possibility for being on a very steep slope, I know that's hard to come by in many places like the Great Lakes, but nonetheless, if you can find a very steep slope, it's unlikely that a buck is going to stop there to rub its antlers. Or if there's some kind of a barricade in which it feels unsafe, that if something came up behind it, it wouldn't be able to run forward. That's another possibility. So, as of June 2015, that's as much as I know uh, that I've gotten from other Terea guardians and my own experience. We hope to gain more in the years to come. Always check the Propagate page on our TereaGuardians.org website if you're planting or interested in planting Terea taxifolia seeds. And there you'll find the latest information and videos such as this one.